Welcome to the Asian supermarket. I'm your host Christina from America, and I'm Carmen from Australia. This week we've got an exciting episode coming up with our friend Tanya, where we'll be discussing the differences of East and West, the importance of cultural awareness, and also interracial dating. So grab your favorite drink and let's chill together as we welcome our exciting guest in episode two. Hi everyone, welcome to the Asian Supermarket. This is episode two. Today we have our guest. Her name is Tanya. She was born in Russia and she's lived in Korea and actually traveled like extensively around Asia. So right now she's quarantined in Korea and it's going to be a very interesting show. So I hope you tune in. Um, let's start with an icebreaker. So Tanya, what is like your favorite Korean food? I actually really like the um, spicy soft tofu soup. Oh, that sounds really good for me. Like I love bibimbap. What about you, Christina? I love duck bokki. <laughs> yeah, so we have to talk about food, I guess, tie in our supermarket theme. So why don't you talk about like how how we know each other? So um, I knew Tanya back in it was high school, right? Um, I remember it was pretty cool. We went on a spontaneous music video shoot with Vanessa. <laughs> Literally, it was like day before. We're like, okay, let's drive to LA. Um, do you feel like that was a point going on that music video shoot where it kind of inspired you to look more into like Asian culture, or did it start from a very young age? I think it ultimately started with my brother because he was learning Japanese and being younger than him, I just looked at everything my brother does and thought it was the coolest thing. So I studied it too from when I was little. Then when I got to high school, um, they were offering us a choice of three languages, either Spanish, French, or Mandarin. And I was like, well, a lot of my friends speak Mandarin. And then if I ever go to their house, I can like speak to their parents or something like it'll be chill. Um, it ended up like I took the class I loved it so much and I think that was kind of like my introduction into everything I started listening to a lot of the music I started with like Taiwanese and Chinese pop mm -hmm. J. Cho <laughs> 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 like me, so like, I never really got into dramas either but like music was my gateway as well so we have that in common yeah. so I feel like one led into the other and then like by 11th 12th grade I feel like so many people were listening to k-pop and I was just like I, I've never really listened to it before but since all my friends were doing it I'm like I'll listen to it too I guess I think that was it yeah Christina and I we took um we took a road trip to LA totally spontaneously. She's like the craziest person. I love her. She's just like do you want to drive down to LA to meet a music video for fun and I'm just like Okay. I'm not doing anything tomorrow. Let's go. <laughs> I know. She's seriously the kind. I went to Canada with her because she asked me to. She was like, oh, I'm going to Canada to see a concert. Do you want to come? And I was like, uh, I'm on the other side of the world, but like, uh, let me look at flights. <laughs> Love her. <laughs> it's like, so, right, right now we're in like three different countries. Um, you're in Korea. You're right now in Korea, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What time is it over there? It is six seventeen a.m. Wow. It's like you can tell we're from different parts of the world by how we're dressed right now. Korea, though, like I saw my friends posting like all the Instagram stories and stuff. Like all the snow, it looks so beautiful. And everyone's making those little duck things. Brought you to uh, Korea right now. Do you want to tell us a little bit about your occupation and um, you know what you're doing over there right now? Um, so the trip itself actually doesn't have much to do with my occupation. I'm actually on my technically vacation right now. Um, I work for an airline. Uh, that's why I go all kind of like all over the place. And I usually use the opportunities like not Corona times. I, I feel like I just can't stay in one place for like more than a couple of days. If I have any days off, I'm just like, where can I fly to in this time? <laughs> Literally. <laughs> wow, that's so cool. So you, like when it's your off days or like when you don't have to work, you'll actually like fly to different places? Yeah. And it's just so funny because actually one of my coworkers, I was talking with him the other day, the day before I actually left to come here. Um, we we're talking and he's just like, you know, 
My favorite kind of day is one where something goes at least slightly wrong. Like if your flight, if your trip to Sydney doesn't work out, hop on a plane to Amsterdam. You are used to like having a very formatted life. If you like to be on a schedule and you're more comfortable with that, um, that's totally fine. I think like there is nothing wrong with that kind of lifestyle, but Christina knows I've like never been the kind of person to, I'm just, I, I can't have predictability. So you're in Korea now, you said because of like travel, not really because of work? No, actually, so I'm technically on my vacation right now. I've actually been planning to come. I was supposed to be here last March because my, I'll put it, my, um, my boy lives here. Oh, <laughs> spicy. <laughs> So are you like mainly based in Korea or like what would you say you're based anywhere or are you just like, you just well, like I'm based in SFO as oh. my like home base for my airport yeah oh. but um I used to live in LA I lived in Burbank for a couple years and I kind of go back and forth because I have extended family in LA and then I have a lot of friends here in Seoul and people that I consider practically like family. Um, I used to actually live in Denmark too. So I like, I consider that another home. I've just been like, I feel like I form this attachment with every place that I live. And I feel like my home is just all over the place. But in terms of where I keep all my stuff, it's in the Bay Area. <laughs> your stuff there but your heart is everywhere <laughs> how do you find like traveling during these times like has it been really difficult like because i know certain countries they don't even let like visitors in so if you're in the aviation industry is it like you guys like have a special pass to be able to just like go into um crew yeah well how it used to be before is obviously if you're on a layover then you can use that to go explore the city of where you're staying but because of covid crew get exemptions of like not having to go through the tests and the quarantine and all of that instead um they just can't leave the hotel which kind of sucks but it's understandable it's for safety how are you occupying your time oh um i brought textbooks to kind of keep studying um my boyfriend speaks almost knowing he's been learning English he's getting much better uh but his family speaks like no English so I've been studying um I brought a lot of books I really love to read so I've been reading um I've been like editing videos and stuff like that um I've been working out I actually like I brought dumbbells resistance bands just kind of like portable workout stuff so mm -hmm. I I feel like I've been passing the time pretty well today's day five out of 14 and um I really feel like the days are flying by it's not that bad actually like when COVID started like I, that gave me practice like you know when they first were like saying you you have a stay-at-home order I was off work like for a month in April like just one day I showed up to work and then they're like and then I don't have any days to show up until I don't know when um so I was off all of April and I started just thinking like what are my hobbies like what what do you do when you're bored because I've never had to sit down and be bored and that was really an opportunity to start like I guess getting to know myself better and what I enjoy doing on my own time. So you mentioned that your boyfriend is actually Korean, is he? <laughs> yeah. Oh, like that's so interesting because like, how do you find like the, like the hierarchy systems and stuff? Cause when you're interacting with his family, I guess you would have to have like, you know, all those values of like respect, treating your elders well and things oh, like definitely. that. How do you find those? And like, do you think that any of them like impacted you like personally like outside of his family dynamic i mean honestly like coming from russia i mean i was born and grew up in russia before i moved to the states um and in russian culture it's kind of similar we definitely have at least in the more traditional families which my parents i had a super like traditional soviet style upbringing um you really have to show a lot of respect and reverence for your parents, your grandparents, like elders, everything. Um, we even have different forms of speech uh, with people that are older than you yeah. or people that you're unfamiliar with. So in that regard, it wasn't like a novel concept for me coming here. I was already kind of used to that anyway. 
Um, but here they definitely take it up a notch more so in like, I would say the workplace environment. There's a lot of, um, a lot of that hierarchy exists in work and in school. Um, yeah. but it hasn't been bad. Like as long, one thing is as long as you know the different speech levels when you speak the language that really reflects your relationship with a person. So if I know that I'm going to be meeting someone that I should speak more politely to, I try to kind of like um, start used to thinking in that way so that I don't botch what I'm saying to them and unintentionally offend them. And I know a lot of people say, oh, but you're a foreigner, you know, they'll understand, but I don't want to keep having to use the foreigner pass as an excuse for like messing up all the time. I want to like keep learning and not use that as an excuse. Yeah. yeah, no, that's such a good mentality to have as well, because like, if you never, I feel like if you always hide behind that like foreigner card as well, you don't really like progress much because you keep thinking like, oh, people understand because I'm a foreigner and then you don't really like step out of your comfort zone or make more of an effort to kind of improve your language skills, right? And because like the hierarchy thing is such an important part of Korean culture, like I feel like it's such an important thing to learn and to like get right if you really want to, you know, be fluent. So no, that's Definitely. so cool. Do you feel like, because um, for me, when I studied abroad in Korea, I felt like being a Korean versus, um, you know, me being an outside Asian person, they treated me kind of differently, especially since I couldn't speak Korean, right? Then for you, do you feel like, um, you know, being more like Westerner, do you feel any difference in treatment, you know, better, worse? I can only speak purely from like personal experience. I definitely, okay, so... When you say like foreigner, I definitely think that they categorize foreigners, first of all, in, you know, categories of their own. Um, it's still because for the longest time they have been like a very homogenous country. Mm -hmm. I feel like they had an internalized racism based on skin color. And I don't think that's actually unique to Korea. There's several other countries where it's like the darker your skin color, the lower your status, that kind of association. Um, I think with the newer generations, they're definitely moving away from that mindset. People have been a lot more open-minded. Mm -hmm. um, but me being of like pale complexion, being a, like Russian American, um, I feel like the treatment is better than if, say, I were from Southeast Asia, because I've heard stories where they kind of have all these racial stereotypes against them. Um, yeah. Again, just anecdotal, that's like what I've been hearing. But um, as far as my own experience, I think people have been really nice. I think one thing that's important is to always make an effort. If they see that you're not loud, obnoxious, trying to stand out, if you're trying to understand the culture, integrate yourself, speak, yeah. like, then they'll be fine with you. Mm -hmm. um, especially, like, if you go to a cafe or, um, or a store, something like that, then people will see that you're a foreigner, they'll try to speak English, but I'm like, I, I go straight into Korean, yeah. um, because I don't want them to assume, like, oh, she's just, you know, she's, she's not learning the language, all of that. Um, people really appreciate the effort. Funny though, because for me, it's like kind of the opposite experience because like, I guess I kind of like look more Korean. So when I go into a store, people come at me with the full Korean and my Korean is like, not great. So I come back with like the broken kind of half English, half Korean. And then some people get really freaked out and they're like, oh my God, I don't know how to handle this person. And they kind of just like <laughs> ignore me. I really remember an experience once, like the very first time I came here, um, I was trying to, I was going to Namsan Tower for the very first time. And um, this was like 2011. So back then the, the internet wasn't as resourceful as it is today. I'll put it that way. So I found like a written blog step by step of how to get there. Um, and obviously, since Wi-Fi wasn't like available everywhere, smartphones weren't like a super big thing yet. Um, I had to have all this memorized. I got to the right like subway station, everything. Then I didn't know which bus to take. And then there was these two girls walking and I, I stopped them for a second to ask for directions. And they're just like, 
no English, no English. Like they get really overwhelmed when someone expects them to speak English. And then like, but as soon as I let them know that I speak Korean, then they got so much more excited. Um, I thought it was kind of funny, kind of cute. After I graduated high school, I didn't quite want, like, I didn't know what I wanted to do. Um, I went to a community college and, um, I decided that since I'd already taken Mandarin and Japanese, they had Korean available, I kind of went in, um, decided to learn it. And at that time, I ended up uh, meeting this lady that she lived right across from the campus and she needed help um, with her six month olds. Uh, they had literally just moved there from Korea because of her husband's work. He works for LG. Um, and I ended up like living with them. Um, I would take care of her kids. She taught me how to cook everything. She taught me how to read, behave like wow. from start to finish. She like, she's, she, I consider her like my auntie or like a second mother because she, um, she totally like brought me up with the culture. And that's when I started really studying. Um, I read baby books to the six month old and you know, like little kids, they don't care if you mess up. So I felt comfortable reading slowly and messing up and figuring it all out. Um, and then just started speaking. That's really where it started. Being exposed to like all these different cultures around the world kind of changed some of your beliefs and you know mannerisms or you feel like you're still you despite you know living in so many different countries obviously like at the root I'm still me mm -hmm. but if it makes sense I feel like when you start living in different places you start interacting with more different types of people um it's mostly out of respect but I kind of like I feel like I become a chameleon kind of like I adjust based on the situation I feel like I'm gonna be if I know I'm in a place that's a little bit more reserved I'm going to act accordingly um as far as like man mannerisms ideologies things like that um I feel like every place you go to, you notice peculiar things like in the way that people think and then you start understanding why they act a certain way. And um, it makes you more empathetic to people in general because at the end of the day, you realize, wow, I don't know anything about this person's story. Um, they have a reason for acting the way that they do, whether it be cultural conditioning or some kind of other like social programming but I feel like I always have that in the back of my mind when I interact with someone new so you kind of realize like why people act the way they do and when you start seeing like repetitive behaviors in like let's say a, a group of people from a certain country you kind of realize like oh you know this might be a result of them growing up like the cultural conditioning as you said so no, it's so cool. Like you get to see so many different cultures and like you get to understand like, oh, you know, people behave differently and you know, it's fine. Like you become more accepting because you're just exposed to so many different more people. I think one of the biggest things actually now that you mention it, like um, for example, we have a different perception of time based on where we come from. If you think about it, like Latin American cultures are way more lax on time. And it's the same with Russians. So with that especially, I kind of learned the hard way. I feel like when I first came here, um, as a, Russians are never on time. Like if you say 3 p.m., yeah. if you're hanging out with Russian friends, mm. everyone knows that 3 p.m. means like 4.30. You know, no one's gonna get butt hurt over it. And if you show up early, it's kind of rude. You're just like, because our mentality is that by showing up early, you are rushing your host. You're not giving them enough time to be prepared. Whereas here, it's like, it's, you should be early out of consideration to the other person that they are giving you their time. Um, so you should respect that and make sure that you're not late. So I feel like whenever I was late for something, the other person got really offended and at first I was like I think that's an overreaction like I think that that's it definitely doesn't merit getting that upset over but then when you think about it if that is your kind of conditioning if that is your perception of time and it's so ingrained into you that it becomes something to get offended by because it does come off as disrespectful 
you start understanding why they react the way that they do. Because, yeah, I think it's quite similar for Asian countries. Like, we think, like, you either, like, early or you're on time. Mm-hmm. Or if you're late, it's just, like, you know, you have to, like, let the other party know, like, okay, I'm going to be late. Like, we wouldn't think to, like, oh, you know, this time is, like, set, but yeah. then we would like, be actually late. But that's so cool. I'm, I'm pretty mind blown about this. Yeah, I always knew about... um uh, for example, like with my family, right? They we come from a pretty traditional Asian background. So when we say four o'clock, they leave at four fifteen. So I'm always like, we need to leave at three forty five to you know be on time for four. But yeah, now right. yeah, but you know for American culture. So if I'm ever late, then same thing like what you said. People find that very offensive. Why are you wasting my time? Kind of thing, right? Reading something the other day, like I don't know if it's a cultural thing, but I was reading one person like on Twitter. They were saying like. Oh, you know, like in my family, we always, at the end of the meal, we will always leave like food on the plate to like actually to like waste. But it's like their mentality is like, if you leave food on the plate, it shows that you've eaten well and that you're like full and you haven't left the meal hungry. Mm -hmm. And I was like, whoa, like that's so interesting because usually you think like if people left food on the plate, it's like it didn't taste good or something, right? But for their family, it's like if you leave food on the plate, it's like it means that you've like you're full, you know, and you've like had a good meal and that, you know, you can't finish it because like, you know, you're like fully nourished. I was like, whoa, that's like so interesting. Everything really just comes down to like the way you look at it, I guess, in the end. And it's just like having your respect for other people and how they see things is so important because like you can't really assume, I guess, that everyone is thinking the same as you and that the the reasons that everyone do things is like the same as you know what you're thinking so it's like it's so good to just have an open mind and then I think having that ability to adjust based on the situation like the more places this that you see the more people that you interact with the more different kinds of approaches you have like you know it's like you have a suitcase and you keep adding to it and adding to it and you're gonna have something to pull out for every situation that you're already familiar with it doesn't shock you it doesn't throw you off balance because you're ready to just kind of like on the spot I'm very curious <laughs> about the dating life <laughs> tell us a little bit about um you know how you and your boy met and um how dating life is like for you um you know being in an Asian country right because um I heard a lot of the Koreans are very traditional in a sense where like what you were saying they want someone to be with someone of the same background same culture especially being able to speak the same language right so how is it like for you communication wise different experiences um I feel like with time because this is obviously not my first boyfriend I've dated other guys from different countries um I've dated someone else from Korea before and I feel like I don't know I think because I I've, I've always had the language thing it's always um it hasn't been as big of an issue because like I said I I kind of feel like I got the boot camp of like knowing what to expect after living with a Korean family. Um, my auntie would always tell me, oh, you can't do this. So you can't do that. Like I would get lectured on everything I did that was like not correct or not acceptable. So I kind of all, already knew what it was like to deal with um, an ajuma as they call him here, like a middle-aged Korean woman who would be like, this is, these are the, this is the way that you eat at the table. These are the mannerisms. This is how you talk to, if like, you know, if you ever have to deal with a mother-in-law, this is what you have to bring her. This is what you have to bring the parents. This is how you talk to the parents. This is what they like. This is what they don't like. This is what they're going to say to you. This is what they're going to ask you, like everything. But um, in terms of like differences, I feel now I'm starting to notice so many more interracial relationships. Um, In America, you can see them a lot. In Korea here, they're also starting to become more prominent. When I lived here, uh, I actually, because I'm Russian Orthodox as far as religion goes. So one of the things that I did was like, I started going to a Russian Orthodox church just for like kind of that sense of community Mm -hmm. and most of the people were Russian women who were actually married to Korean guys. There are a lot more people um, in interracial relationships here than I I imagined Mm -hmm. and I think it's always really interesting because once again 
I mean, relationships are tough to begin with, no matter what background you come from. You know, you can be of the same culture and have even more misunderstandings. Yeah. Um, but here, it's like, it really depends. Being Russian, again, the hierarchy system isn't really something that fazed me. The language thing was not so much an issue. I think the toughest part is maybe like jokes and things like that if there are some kind of like expressions that I don't get or if I am watching a show and I think it's so hilarious or if I see a meme and I obviously want to like show it to him I'm just like this is so funny and he's just like I don't get it <laughs> dude I feel like that's not even that much of a cultural thing because I have friends from the same culture and I'm like this is hilarious and they're like are you kidding <laughs> another big thing is maybe the amount of affection like the way people show affection um yes. here PDA is definitely not acceptable I, I think the most people would go to is holding hands yeah. um but it's considered disrespectful to be like kissing and like all over each other in public which I totally get. I, I remember the first time I started dating here, the guy I was with, I'm just like, if you want to like have a little peck or something like that, they're just like, no, oh, this is not the place to do it. I'm like, there's literally no one around. We're at a park. It's still <laughs> something that's ingrained in their mind that we're out in public. That's not acceptable. Like you guys probably know here, they like to do all the couple things. They like to have matching couple outfits, matching couple accessories, matching like and they celebrate like um, a lot of milestones, right? Like the first yeah, milestone celebrations. I think that's a little too much for me personally. Mm -hmm. um, luckily, my boy and I are on the same wavelength as far as that goes, which I think is because I'm, I can't be bothered to remember when the 200th day is. Do they have an app for that? Like, how do you? There is an app for that. Day? There is an app for that. So, oh. <laughs> own that app um another ask like if you're in a more serious relationship and like the family starts getting involved i think a lot of people what they don't realize is like the person that you're with is not just one person they are also part of a family unit if you're dating someone you're dating their family one thing is you know they're pretty big on like the whole weight thing here and i in the u.s i have like a, a normal body physique here i i'm probably considered larger <laughs> but um my boyfriend's mom when I met her she like she really liked me but she's just like as a gift she got me diet shakes and I'm just like oh my god oh but if you think about it here they don't do that to offend you they do that because they care for you and yeah. if you don't have this victim mentality and everything you don't consider everything an offense and again look back on why does this person do what they do yeah. then to them they are showing it as a sign of caring they want what's best for you like i heard that they were like if you don't look good they'll just all right be like look you don't look good today but that's like like that's like their way of showing affection and concern is to say like you know like, yeah. like is something happening like you don't look well like you should you know you should do something about it you know like you're a mess those pants don't look good on you let's yeah. go get you new ones we need to fix your face yeah like <laughs> it's just like it's like you could be offended but in a way it's like it's out of consideration they're just helping you be the best you can be you know in their mind <laughs> i i personally appreciate it i you yeah. know if like someone notices something off about me I prefer that they they say it. I love people who are honest. I love when people are open and comfortable and saying these things to me. It's so much worse than like um, having someone say it behind your back. It's so good to have a chat with you and to find out so much, so many things about you. Find out so much about like Russian culture as well. Like I didn't know all those things that you told me. But thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you guys so much for having me. Um, stay tuned, everybody, for episode three. We're going to be having a guest speaker who was born in the Philippines, uh, moved to New Zealand, then to the US, and finally back to New Zealand again. So we can learn about his reasoning as to why he wanted to move back and more global adventures together. Cool. All right. Thank you so much for joining us today, Tanya. Bye.